Here we're going to tie Garcia's mini hot. First thing we're going to do is start off with some chartreuse thread. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in a piece of uh, micro tubing or midge tubing depending on the the size that you're going to tie. You can use midge tubing on 12s and 14s and you'll want to use micro tubing on the smaller 16s, 18s, 20s. What we're going to do is just tie that in and take it down just a little bit down the bend of the hook. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of red flashaboo. We're going to tie that in right here at the back as well. Then we're going to take that flashaboo and we're going to wrap it around the, the butt end of this fly here. Create kind of a little tag or a hot butt. And you only want to do it about four or five wraps forward. That should be plenty for the little tag. Then once you've got it wrapped, you can just capture it. Trim out the excess. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build up just a little bit of a taper to the body of this fly. We don't want it to be totally flat. We want to build up kind of a, a bugginess taper to it. So what I'll do is I'll just wrap back and forth a couple of times here just to kind of cover up the, the work that we've already done. And then once I've done that once, I'll take it forward again and then I'll wrap back but this time I won't go quite all the way back. I'll stop just short and then come back forward. You can see I'm not going all the way to the eye either. I'm stopping well short of the eye. Once you've got a bit of a buggy taper going, take your thread and you're going to stop at about the one quarter way point from the, the eye. Then we're going to take that midge tubing, micro tubing, we're going to stretch it nice and tight as we wrap the tubing forward. There you can see my kind of taper coming to life. And then once we get to our thread we can just capture it. Some nice tight wraps. Then we can trim out the excess. Now the next thing to do is to tie in our underwing. For that, what we're going to do is we're going to take just a little pinch of pearl ice dubbing. We're going to take a section and we're going to tie it right in the middle of the section so I have equal parts hanging off of the front and the back. And what I'll do is I'll just take the front half and pull it back, double it over. And I'll just take my thread here and make sure I have a nice little smooth transition. Then what we're going to do is we're going to trim that overwing or the underwing, I'm sorry, to just a little bit longer than the butt of the fly. There we go. Now the next thing to do is take some bleached elk hair. We're going to take a clump that's about half of the diameter of a pencil and put it in a hair stacker. Stack it so that the tips are nice and even. And we'll add a little bit more here. I didn't quite get as much as I wanted in that stack. Try it once more.
go. Now, yeah, once we have our clump ready to go, we're going to take it and pinch it onto the top of our hook, and we want our wing here to be just slightly larger than our underwing. We're going to do a nice loose wrap of thread and tighten down. What I'm actually going to do is bite through all those fibers a couple of times. What that'll do is help lock them down, keep them from spinning on me. And I'll take a couple more wraps on the wing. And then what I usually do is just trim out all the excess. What I like to do is just kind of keep holding the the wing and my finger. That way I don't get any of the the butt end fibers too mixed up. Once you got most of them trimmed, you can let go. And just kind of clean it all up. We're going to cover most of this up with some thread and stuff, so don't worry too much if uh, it looks a little scraggly right now. Just make sure you leave enough room up here by the eye. You don't want to get too many of these fibers too close to the eye. I like to leave a nice space. Once we've got them trimmed, we're just going to take our thread and bite through them a couple more times. There we go. Then what we're going to do is we're going to tie in our, our hackle. For that I'm going to use just a, a whiting Coachman Brown or Brown hackle. Just gonna make sure I got enough of clearance here. We want our hackle to reach below the, the point of the hook a couple millimeters or two. Then we're gonna take this brown hackle and we're gonna tie it in. Right near the head, take our thread back. Trim out the excess. Give everything a rough cleaning. A few more wraps of thread. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of caddis green ice dubbing. Careful not to use too much at this point. Just want to coat our thread here with a little bit of it. You can use a little bit of wax or saliva to get it nice and tight. Tightly, tightly dubbed. I don't want it to be too shaggy. I don't want any guard hairs really sticking up too much. Then we'll take our thread all the way to the eye. Now the next thing to do is to take our hackle here. We're just going to wrap through through this dubbing here, get it situated. Got one little piece of hair that's stuck. Trim him out of there, there we go. I'm going to space my wraps out ever so slightly. I'm not going to necessarily put them right next to each other. Probably should have used my hackle pliers here. Let me grab those. wrap right up by the front. That should be enough. All I'm going to do is just capture it with my thread. I can trim out the tip of that hackle. And we're ready to whip finish. That's all there is to Garcia's Mini Hot. Great little caddis pattern. Looks kind of like a stonefly as well. It's kind of a new age twist on a stimulator. And you can buy all the materials and uh, find the recipe for this fly 
at intheriffle.com.